Spring is in the air in my corner of the world, so my back feet is out of mothballs and back on the road. Some people I know ride their cargo bikes throughout the winter, but I was only out occasionally, riding some of my other bikes. Now that I'm riding my back feet again, running errands and transporting my family, this cargo bike focused urban planning YouTube channel will once again have a cargo bike focus. However, this may be the last episode of Bike Bike Nudge Nudge. For in this episode, I'm going to attempt three dangerous stunts on my back feet. There's a good chance I might not survive or will be so badly maimed that I'll never be able to ride a bike again. I have selected three types of low quality active transportation infrastructure found in my city and I will attempt to use them on my back feet. These three types of infrastructure are often found on paths where people are allowed to ride bikes and the experience using them on a regular bike can range anywhere from annoying to impossible. I will risk my own life to use these three types of low quality infrastructure so that you, the viewer at home, will be prepared for them if you get your first cargo bike or are an experienced rider but following Google Maps in an unknown area. Do not attempt to use such low quality infrastructure with your back feet. I have been training for years by watching a lot of Super Dave Osborne stunts. For all my stunts, I will use a safety harness made out of genuine Saskatchewan seal skin. I hope you live in a city that will listen to you when you advocate for proper bike infrastructure and will not install such low quality infrastructure. Now it's time for the first stunt. These are pedestrian barriers. Despite extensive research and consulting with the traffic engineers on staff here at Bike Bike Nudge Nudge, I haven't found a definitive reason as to why they are used. My two best hypotheses are to slow people down before they interact with vehicles or to prevent vehicles from using pedestrian infrastructure. For people walking or on regular bikes, these barriers tend to just be annoying. As you can see in these examples, people will go around them if possible. For people using a mobility device, these barriers can be impassable. As for the barriers I will attempt to ride through today, I don't see their purpose. The 90 degree corners in the fence should slow people down before they cross the alley and also prevent vehicles from using this overpass. There are no barriers at the other side of this overpass, just more tight fenced in corners. If I cannot get through these barriers with my back feet, or if I was on a mobility device, the shortest route to the other side of this overpass is 1.5 kilometers. Using the overpass is just 300 meters. Before I make the attempt on my back feet, I'll demonstrate how the barriers are just an annoyance on a regular bike. I'll see you after the stunt, if I survive. Well, as you can see, I survived. The barrier was tricky to get through with the nearly empty back feet. The other side of the overpass was nearly as hard without the barrier due to the close fence and the 90 degree turns in the path. If the barriers were just a bit closer together, they would be impassable with the back feet. This would be especially bad for someone who started from the other side of the overpass. I don't think there's enough space to turn my back feet around on the overpass, so I would have to walk it backwards over the entire overpass. That's about enough on the overpass. Let's move to the second stunt. Here we have a set of stairs. They are an annoyance for anyone on a regular bike as you'd have to dismount and then either carry your bike or use the little ramp on the side. I'm attempting to use these stairs as it might be possible with the back feet. There are not too many stairs so I might be able to get my back feet up and down. There are other stairs in my city that would be impossible with the back feet. Google will occasionally discourage me from riding my bike by suggesting using these stairs as my best route. As you can see with the back feet, it is too wide to use the ramp and too long to bounce down these stairs. I will have to attempt to lift the back of the bike to get it onto the stairs. I did some weight training this winter whenever my bathroom scale was mean to me, so I may have the strength to use the stairs. If these stairs were longer or steeper, or if you're one of the few people in the world not as strong as me, these stairs would be impassable. It's 200 meters to the other side of this bridge, but 4.3 kilometers if you have to go around. Well, time for stunt number two. As you can see from the video, I was able to get my back feet down the stairs. The slope of the stairs was not steep, so it was possible to slowly bounce the back feet down them. I made an attempt to take my back feet back up the stairs, but it was too difficult. I might have been able to do it if I was willing to try harder or if I had some help. Dragging the back feet up the stairs by the front fork might have worked better than my attempt to take the bike up the stairs backwards. 
In any event, I don't recommend taking your back feet on stairs. Let's move to the third stunt that I filmed last autumn when I still thought me talking in front of a camera was a good idea. I hope I survived that stunt. So for my final stunt in this video, I am going to attempt to use an underpass. In civilized countries like the Netherlands, they actually will leave cyclists level and make cars go up or down because it's easier in your car to go over a bridge or through an underpass. But in car-centric countries like the one I'm in, uh, they use underpasses or overpasses for bikes. And not only do they make bikes and pedestrians go up and down, they also add an obstacle course before you get to it. So I have heard rumors of the one that I'm about to use. I have never used it myself. And I think this is something that as a novice backfeats rider, you should be aware of when you're trying to think of where you're going and planning your route. And if you're in advocacy or if you're a transit planner, you should try and not have these kind of, uh, these kind of overpasses or underpasses. As you can see for this particular underpass, the, um, the traffic is really bad here. So taking a lane and riding through traffic would not be the greatest thing, it would not be very, uh, very comfortable. You'd have a high level of traffic stress. So I will get my camera daughter set up to record and I will also record as I attempt to go through the underpass, which promises to be very twisty and turny. I feel like I'm doing a Super Dave Osborne stunt. We're coming in to the underpass. Oh God, it's horrible from this direction. What the heck is okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, I gotta put a foot down. Oh, more cyclists. Okay, I gotta put a foot down for this. I can't do this. How do you do that? Especially on a cargo bike. How do you? Do oh, I don't know. Oh, we can make. Oh, we made it. Oh, this is horrible. I can't. I can't do it without doing a foot down. What is this? Some kind of spaghetti string? Yeah. All right. Okay, and more. I might be able to do this one. This is some kind of a spaghetti string. Yeah. Confirmed it's some kind of spaghetti string. Yeah. Okay, so we're underneath. We're going under. under. And now we have to go up again. I have the boost on. I have more boost on. Oh, I. No, I oh. can't do it. That uh, is a severe angle we turned up. Okay. I cannot do this. So, on a back feet, I am going to have to push my bike up this. I don't like this underpass. Okay, this is. So, if you're on a Bach feet and you have an underpass or an overpass where they put something like this, it's going to be difficult to use on a Bach feet. Difficult? Yeah. So, there you have it. I was able to survive using three different types of low quality active transportation infrastructure in my city. I forgot to mention that civilized countries use pedestrian underpasses if they are not able to make safe, people priority intersections. There are two reasons for this. First, the underpasses don't have to go as deep since people tend to be shorter than trucks. Second, the underpasses are straight so the people on bikes can build speed going down and use that speed to help them get up the other side. As you can see in the underpass I used, I could not build any speed going down and the turns were so tight going up that I had to walk my back beats. It also turns out that the most dangerous part of this video was crossing at the intersection because I didn't want to use that underpass again. My city forbids pedestrians from crossing this road and taking the lane on the bike is a little intimidating. This forces people through the underpass, which may be okay to walk through, but is very unpleasant on a bike. Please consider giving a thumbs up if you're relieved that I survived using so-called active transportation infrastructure in my city. Consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing more videos about urban planning told from the seat of a Bakvitz. While you're waiting for my next video, consider clicking this link to a previous video I did where other cargo bike owners share their experiences. Spring is a great time to try a new bike, and the people in the video might nudge you to try a cargo bike.